Most students go back to school in September significantly worse at maths and indeed other subjects than when they leave school just before the summer holidays. In this video, we'll talk about whether you should worry about this phenomenon, I'll tell you the three types of math that you can be doing over the summer holidays that are really useful, and I'll tell you the one situation where I think it really is worth doing a lot more work. This phenomenon we're talking about today really affects all students across the whole spectrum of abilities and enthusiasm levels. There clearly is a balance over the summer holidays between taking a break and getting some rest and also potentially possibly getting ahead and making sure you don't forget those things that you've already learned. And that's really the first thing I want to say here, that absolutely you really, really should take a good break over the summer holiday. Even the students that I work with sometimes who for good reasons do push themselves through the summer holidays, and we'll talk about which situations that could be good for later, even those students do usually take at least a week or two off, which is totally away from maths and work. It's really important that at some point in the year you get that chance for a reset, and the long summer holiday usually is one of the best chances to do that. Now this phenomenon I'm talking about is often referred to as the summer slide, this idea that somewhere between June and July and September and October students slide down from a peak of ability where they've been preparing for exams, where they've been studying all year, they've been working hard and then they have a rest and a break and by September they've not forgotten everything but forgotten some things and have also got out of the habit of solving problems and doing maths. And the first question you might ask yourself is, should you really worry about this at all? Because uh, it's also the case that when you go back and you get into it, you do also start to improve. So like anything, if you take two weeks off the first day you come back to it, you're going to be a little bit rusty, you're going to need to be warming up. So I think a lot of the studies out there that have looked at the summer slide have perhaps not always taken this into account as much as they should, that quite a lot of that dip may well come back quite quickly after a week or two. And it is also a real phenomenon that if we don't keep practicing uh, and recalling the things that we've learned, eventually uh, they will take more and more work uh, to come back to us. So it might be a question of just warming up a little bit, or it might actually take quite a lot of work to get going. And if you think about starting a new term in September, you really want to start that term warmed up and fresh and ready to go. So when people ask me, should I do any work over the summer, I would almost always say, you should definitely do at least some work, and in particular, you should be doing something in the few days in the run-up to starting a new term, whether that's going back to look over previous work or trying to look ahead uh, to what's coming later or just doing something uh, that, that warms up your problem-solving skills because it can really, really help you get a head start and just get going with a new term, and it really helps you enjoy it more as well. I think we all enjoy doing maths and other subjects if, when we get there, uh, we remember uh, what we've done before and we can do those things really well. There's nothing more satisfying, I think, than, uh, than, than doing maths when you get it right. Or maybe it's not about getting it right, but where you feel that you've got the tools you need to engage in problem solving and that you can feel that you're making progress. That's really, really important, I think. But I think we can also make a really good case for doing a little bit of maths every week through the summer, with the exception of taking a block of time off, as I said. And it's a great chance to do things, perhaps, that you don't have time for all the, all the time in schools. So, for example, many students that I work with really, really enjoy the maths challenges and competitions. And we don't always get time to focus on those as much as we should as the year goes on. With my own students, I really uh, make a point of including them all, all through the year because I, I think it's something that's very important. But it can easily get lost in the busyness of trying to get through a syllabus and all the other things that are going on in term time. Now, I've made lots of courses that are specifically about those math challenges as well, which is perhaps why my students are particularly interested in those. But I think they're really important and really good for all students because they're the sorts of maths that help you uh, learn to study better, learn to be a better problem solver. Uh, they're not necessarily about any particular topic, but studying them really makes everything a lot easier. And people who are good at those sorts of competitions often uh, find that they find a lot of their other uh, maths work a lot easier as a result and go on to get great results, not just in the challenges, but in school maths as well. So that's one thing I really think you could be doing during the summer holidays. Another thing you could be doing is just going back to any topics that you found difficult through the year, or if you can't think of one particular topic, just going back and doing a couple of questions from each of those topics. When you study something and you stop studying, your brain kind of continues to process it somewhere in the background. Something There's something going on there that means that when you go back to it a second time, you often have deeper insights about it. You often understand it. Uh, more fully than the first time around, and actually perhaps something that you'd found really difficult now is not so bad and you can get a lot of confidence and you can also look back and feel quite satisfied about that work you've been doing. If you go there and you still can't uh, understand it as well, then it's a great chance to 
you know, go for a YouTube video, find a tutor, find a friend who can help you, anything like that. And you know, you can really uh, make sure you're rigorously uh, going through all those areas of maths uh, and making sure that you've really covered everything very thoroughly. You know, it's always tempting to kind of focus on the bits that are going well, you know, do more and more practice of the things that you like and that you enjoy. Whereas really what we should be doing is also finding those bits that we haven't enjoyed and trying to sort of think about, well, why was that? Is there something there that I haven't understood? Could I fix that? These days, many of the topics that I didn't like as much at school are some of my favourite ones because I've really managed to uh, overcome those hurdles by uh, teaching them, working with students and you know, it's a very satisfying process. And the third thing I think you can do a little bit is to try to look ahead if you can. So if you have a syllabus list for the following year, just going and doing a little bit of reading about it. Again, it might be watching a few YouTube videos. It might be looking at the textbook for next year. If you can ask your teacher what textbook you're going to be using, perhaps they'll even give you the textbook uh, ahead of time once they've taken them in from the previous year group. And you can just start doing a little bit of work from it. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't really matter if you understand it fully or not as you're doing this, because you know you're going to be studying that again uh, in the future. You know someone is going to be teaching that to you. But, it, but really, if you have looked ahead at something, if you know just a little bit about it, um, even if you can work out the bits that you found difficult, you will have those questions in mind uh, that you can ask when it gets to that point in class. I think so often, you know, we're presented with maths in maths lessons and we have one chance uh, at it. Uh, and in that moment, we don't have the right questions. We haven't thought it through enough. And we can sometimes miss those opportunities. And just being slightly ahead with your reading, slightly ahead with those problems, really the students that I know that have done that have been really some of the most uh, exceptional students. I can think of students who, you know, were not uh, doing very well the year before and they took this approach and they got ahead and they suddenly found out oh, actually uh, yes there are things that I find difficult in here but I know the things that I'm finding difficult I've been organized about working out the sort of things that I think I'm going to find difficult and they have this sort of strategy in place for asking problems and can be so so effective so that's three things I think basically anyone can be doing looking back looking ahead and kind of looking sideways with the challenge uh, style material as well. Just occasionally you might actually do lots and lots of work over the summer holidays and the only time that I really would recommend going all out on it is if you've got say a big public exam coming up, uh, if you've missed a lot of school and you need to catch up um, or if you really do want to get ahead for some other reason. So often in the year before uh, GCSEs that's a really good time to push ahead and to do a lot of extra work. I think uh, doing a bit of extra work in the gap between GCSE and A-level can be super useful as well because there's a big step up from GCSE to A-level maths. In fact I've made a whole course about that step up, get ready for A-level maths that you can have a look at if you're in that position. And the other students I think that do this are those who are sort of preparing for uh, school entrance exams or perhaps university entrance exams. Uh, the 11 plus and 13 plus exams are, are big ones for some students wanting to get into grammar schools or independent schools. When I have 11 plus students, they often start preparing around April time and then they will really, really get into their preparations uh, over the summer in, in the run up to those exams. And again, I have another uh, course uh, preparing for 11 plus math exams. It's a really, really big course. If you know anyone who is uh, studying those they would be well advised to go and have a look at that. And if you want to know more about how to get really, really good at maths, and in particular why I think the challenge style maths is such a good part of preparing any student at any age and how it can really, really enrich your uh, curriculum, then take a look at this other video that I've made here about how to get good at maths.